Today I'm going to show you how to complete a Punnett square using some building blocks. I hope that this will be helpful and a good visual for you, so stick around as we do this. Look at the cute little red dog that I made out of building blocks and the white one. And we're going to take these red and white dogs and we're going to mate them together and figure out what the probability would be for them to have a red or white dog. In this particular demonstration, we're going to say that red is dominant. The red dog may have gotten two alleles from a red mom and a red furred dad. Or it may have gotten two alleles, one from a red dad, and one from a white furred mother. Therefore, the red would come out either way. But for the white dog, it would have to have two alleles from both white furred parents. Remember, red is our dominant trait here, which means it's going to overpower the white fur trait. So red is going to stack on top and we are going to show the red block. But that's not the case with our white dog. Our white dog must have had two parents that were also white. A red dog could have a white mom or dad, but as you can see when I flip the blocks up, you can only see the red phenotype. Our very first Punnett square, what we're going to do is we're going to make two red dogs. It has the dominant allele for red fur, so it shows the phenotype for red fur on both of the dogs, but they carry the trait for white in both of their genes. The dominant allele always goes on the left-hand side on the top of the box or the Punnett square, and the recessive always goes on the right-hand side. Now, the dominant for the second parent will go on the top, and the recessive will go on the bottom. We have only set up the Punnett square. Now we're going to complete it by taking that red dominant allele and pulling it over into the top two boxes. So both of those top two boxes should have the dominant allele for red fur. Now, the white block will be also pulled over into the bottom two boxes. The red block will now be dropped into both the gray boxes. Now for the bottom gray box, you're going to put the red block on the left-hand side because it is dominant, whereas the recessive should go on the right hand side. The white one will now be dropped into both of those boxes. And now your Punnett square is now complete. Our Punnett square is now complete, but now we need to be able to interpret what the Punnett square is actually telling us. The red and white blocks just broken apart, that is our genotype. But when we snap them together, we can see the phenotype because when I stack them inside of the box, we can now see that this should be a red furred dog. If I snap together this top right box, we can see that yes, it has a red and yellow genotype, but when I stack it up and looking down from above, the phenotype should be red because red is dominant, so it'll be on the top of that stack of blocks. Now, if I continue to stack these up, you will notice that they all have that red block on top, except for this last section. This last section, we will have two white blocks. There's not a dominant allele, so they will just be stacked on top of each other. It doesn't matter which one's on top, they're both white. So when I put that one down, you will see that there is a 25% chance of there being a white furred puppy in this litter. The rest will be a 75% chance of a red furred puppy. Now, two of the puppies will carry the allele for the white fur, but show the allele or the trait for red. For this next Punnett square example, you're going to take the two red alleles from this parent and you're going to put it on the left hand side. They are both dominant, so it doesn't matter which one goes where. As for the red parent here, the red is on top, it's still a red dog, but you're gonna take the red allele and put it on the left hand side because it is dominant. The right hand side will be for the white allele. We're going to now complete the Punnett square and I'm gonna speed it up just a little bit so you can see how this works over time. You're gonna drop down the top 
red dominant allele into both of the gray boxes. I'm gonna do the same thing for the white one. And now I'm going to speed it up. The genotypes for all of these Punnett square boxes would be red white or red red. The ones in the white would be red white, but the ones in the gray would be red red. Now, as you can see, I am stacking these up. They are both red, so it doesn't matter which one's on top because they are both the dominant alleles. So that dog in the top left would be red. Now, for the ones on the right-hand side in the yellow boxes, if we stack those ones up, the red would go on top because it is dominant, and the white would be hidden, and you would only see the red. So the phenotype would be red. So it looks like all of the phenotypes for this Punnett square would be red. So it would be a 100% chance of having a red dog, even though some of the dogs have that hidden allele or that hidden genotype of the white fur. So for this last example, I'm speeding it up quite a bit so that you can see quickly how these things are formed. I'm going to take a pure white genotype on the left hand side and a pure red genotype on the top and we're going to mate these two dogs and see what the probability would be of having a red furred blocked dog or a white furred blocked dog. And so the red will drop down as we've done before in the left hand side the white ones will be pulled over and there we go voila we've got our genotypes all paired together. So if we want to know the phenotype for all of the Punnett squares that we have created, we would stack these blocks together. So we'd pull these out, and we'd stack the red one on top because the red is dominant and the white is recessive. So when we put them down on the ground, we would only see the red phenotype showing. So the phenotype would be red fur block. So all of our dogs here would be red because they all have a red block inside so we know that red is dominant. We're done!